Welcome to the Teacher's Lounge, brought to you by Paper Birch, an education company designed to make sure you thrive. I am your host, Francesca Thompson, teacher, entrepreneur, and influencer. I am on a mission to transform education with innovative tools, tips, and resources. Class in session. Hi, I'm Francesca Thompson, and we're going to get right into it. This video blog is about planning an amazing event, a virtual event. We're all about to go back to school, and a lot of the districts have called it and said that we have to return to school virtually because of the conditions with the pandemic. And to keep students and teachers safe, this is what we've got to do. Well, education still must go on, correct? And so I put together this presentation to show you how to plan an amazing virtual event. We want to make sure that you as educators thrive in your planning phases for uh, this upcoming school year. So I have six steps to put together um, an amazing virtual event, but I'm first going to show you and talk to you about my event. I work at a school district in the state of Georgia, and once we were released to go home during the pandemic, within the first two weeks, I was like, oh, this is boring. Um, I, you know, what can I do to make class exciting? You know, we were kind of thrown out there as everybody, all educators around the world had to change their plans, right? We were no longer going to be in the classroom, and so you've got to figure out a way to be innovative. So one of the things that I wanted to do was put together a virtual event, and it was going to be a guest speaker event, kind of like a discussion between me and my special guest. And so this flyer you see is what I put together to kind of advertise the event and um, sent out to my students. They did not know who the special guest was, and that created a little bit of um, suspense and kind of like, oh my gosh, who, what is Miss Thompson up to now? And so they were interested. That was the hook. If you're not there on that Friday, you're not going to see who this special guest is. And so I'm going to give you the steps to creating a really great virtual event. So, and it's thunderstorming right now. So if you can hear that, it is, the rain is here. So six steps to an amazing virtual event. The first thing I had to do was plan out my topic. I wanted to make sure it was relevant, relevant to what was going on. Everybody was talking about the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, what's happening, how it affected businesses, things were closing down, students' lives were being changed. Um, each day there was something new. And so it was relevant, current. It was something that everyone could tap into because at that time, every person was affected by it in some form or fashion. So plan out your topic. Figure out what you want to talk about. I have something here called YE Academy. That is another program that I am in. Um, and so that's another resource that I use to tap into to plan some of my topics as well. Number two, secure your guest speaker. I use a, a platform called Nepris where you can actually get in contact with industry leaders, right? And connect them to your classroom virtually as well. And they also have planned events that you can tap into as well and connect your classes. But when you think about your guest speaker, it could be someone from your advisory board. It could be community leaders. It could be other classes, other teachers, other programs. So just, you know, there is a wide range of people that you can select that you can talk to about your virtual event, right? And the third thing I had to do was promote the event. This is what you've got to do to get the kids hooked. Um, in my district, we use something called eClass, and that is the platform that we use to communicate with the, with the students. And so as a result, I was able to promote my event through the discussion post on eClass. I had to get the word out. In addition to that, I took it a step further and I said, let me email these parents and let these parents know 
that their kid can get extra credit as long as they're at my virtual event. Because the one thing you wanna do is have a virtual event, have students there and have them participate. If not, it's gonna sound like this if nobody's at your virtual event. And we're not trying to hear crickets, especially after you've done all of this work, right? And so I promoted the event, got the kids excited. I also do use social media. I'm part of a club called Zeka. I'm the advisor. And so I do use my social media platform to let my students know what's going on in my classes. The um, next thing I had to do was make sure that my students had the instructions on what to do. I gave them the links to the articles that they needed to read. I gave them questions to make them think a little deeper and be ready to um, add to the discussion. And then I also told them that you need to uh, be ready to share. Share what you have done during these three weeks that we've been at home. What ideas have popped up? You know, so you create this platform where you're giving them information, you're giving them the instructions, you're telling them what to do, and you're leaving, some, you're leaving space for them to be creative and to share what they've done, right? And that's all going into the instructions. So now I've got my topic, my guest speaker, I promoted it, my students have the instruction, oh, we ready, okay? But the last thing you gotta do, and this is one of the most important things, is to make sure that you've worked out all the te technical di difficulties. The worst thing with a virtual event is when someone doesn't know how to unmute themselves or they don't know how to flip their camera on or uh, everybody doesn't know how to push mute or someone has given you the wrong phone number or email address to call in that day and y'all can't get connected. You wanna test all of those things out before the day of the event, because you will lose your audience if you're on, if it's the day of, and you're trying to put these things together, and you're trying to work out the technical difficulties, and your mic doesn't work, or the static playing, it's just too much. I didn't come here for this. You know, your students will then start going back to playing their video games, but they'll still have you up. So, I didn't want that kind of event. I wanted my students to be tapped in and ready to be involved in the conversation. So after you've done all of that, you've done the work, enjoy your event, you've done it, right? It's so, it's exciting. We had a great time when I did my virtual event. The guest speaker, like I said, was the, one of the teachers there at the school. So they were excited to see us. And um, my students really surprised me with the amazing ideas that they came, out, um, came up with. Uh, some of them had even started businesses. So it's all of these great things that are going on. A couple other things that I want to share, uh, make sure you tap into that resource necklace. That's a great resource to have, especially since we are going to, we don't know how long we're going to be staying at home. So you want to try to see if you can get um, that in the budget some kind of way. Also, you want to make sure that you invite your admin team. The admin team, now they have to be creative on how they evaluate us since we're not going to be in class and you can come in and do the 30 minute walkthroughs. You wanna invite them to the things that you got going on. So you want to tap into that and make sure you share the event with them. They can be a part of the discussion if they want to, or they can just sit back and listen and watch and observe. So you wanna make sure you do something like that. Um, <clears throat> And when it comes to getting a guest speaker, please don't be afraid to reach out to people. And please don't be afraid to get the word no. It's okay, no's okay. If you can't be my guest speaker this week or this month, maybe next month, right? Let me move on to the next thing. But it's gonna be easier to get someone to come into your class virtually than to actually come to your class, right? My first class is at seven o'clock in the morning. I have always had a hard time getting my seven o'clock in the morning class to get a guest speaker, right? because by the time they wake up, have their coffee, get in traffic, fight buses, figure out what's student parking and what's not, come into a big building that they've never been in before and get to my class, that's exhausting. But if I say, just send me your email and just be logged in at 7.30 and I will, you can just be at home and we can have a discussion, they're more willing to do that. So keep those things in mind as you plan your virtual event. 
I will have more information for you all throughout this time. I will have more tools and resources for you all. I hope you enjoy this. Please uh, comment, um, like the YouTube page, follow me. You see my Twitter handle right there. So please stay in touch. More to come because I want you to thrive.